It's day 153 of the project and today I'm taking a look at a gentleman's classic citrus aromatic fragrance that was first launched back in 1984. This one is Eau Sauvage Extreme by fashion and fragrance house Christian Dior. So to find out how this compares to the others in the Eau Sauvage lineup and whether it's worth still picking up in 2022 over today's other uh, fresh summer scents, stay tuned to Max Frags. <laughs> Yes, hello again everybody and welcome to another episode of Mags Frags. I'm Paul and this is day 153 of my Fragrance 365 project where it's the fragrance that's the star of the show. Today's featured scent is this little beauty from Christian Dior. This is Eau Sauvage Extreme and it was first launched back in 1984 and it followed the uh, original Eau Sauvage EDT from way before my time uh, back in 1966 when Sir Bobby Moore lifted the uh, World Cup for England so what a year that was. However since then uh, the uh, this version has been kind of tweaked and modernised to bring it more up to date and in line with uh, some of today's designer scents uh, but it still has that nod to that magical retro era of the 1980s and the 90s. I also own the, uh, let's say, the EDT version as well as the uh, the Parfum Flankers, uh, and it was the EDT that was the the very one of the very first reviews that I did when I first set up the channel uh, back in 2020. So if you want to go check that one out, please do so. I will also cover the uh, the Parfum later in the project. There is also a cologne version as well as uh, as well as a leather flanker, uh, but I don't own either of those two. Uh, but this one, I believe, is uh, pretty pretty difficult also to find in North America, uh, but it is still widely available here in the UK and in Europe. And the only bottle size that I've come across in this particular version is the 100ml bottle size. Uh, but you can get the uh, the massive 200ml bottles in the EDT as well as the uh, Parfum flankers like this one. Yes, yeah, so into the presentation and the box looks really classy and elegant in this matte white textured finish with uh, a, mat a metallic chrome stripe that runs all the way around the uh, circumference of the box. Uh, there's also a, like a black plaque in the in the centre uh, which features the uh, the name of the fragrance uh, which is again is in uh, like a metallic chrome. Uh, the front and the back uh, are identical and both include the, uh, the Dior logo and also the size and concentration which in this case is an intense eau de parfum. Um, and at the uh, the bottom we've also got your usual uh, barcode and your batch code there and for any batch code collectors out there this one is a June 2019 version and the batch code on this one is 9F01. The bottle comes in the familiar Eau Sauvage ribbed design. However, the others all come in like a, a clear glass, uh, whilst this one comes in a jet black opaque finish, which means that you can't see the, uh, the level of the juice, which has always been one of my little pet hates. Again, there's the uh, silver metallic band that runs all around the, uh, the center of the bottle. And then in the center, you've got the, uh, the name of the fragrance and the name of the house on the front. At the back there's the uh, Christian Dior logo and there's also some uh, uh, the, the size and concentration information as well on there. Uh, at the top we've got a magnetic cap which is really nice. I don't think you got a magnetic cap uh, with uh, some of the uh, some of the earlier models and that's also got this like textured finish and it's in uh, it's in a chrome. The atomizer is uh, it's a Dior so they're always like a Rolls Royce, but this is not probably not as good as um, what you'd find on the um, Dior Home Intense line and stuff like that. But still a really nice, uh, still a really nice sprayer. And overall, the design on this is uh, really stylish, elegant, and I think it looks really good. It's really gentlemanly when it's uh, when it's on your windowsill or your dressing table. Yeah, the top notes in this one are lemon, lavender, bergamot, basil and fruity notes. In the heart of the scent there's rosemary, bay leaf, coriander, aldehydes, sandalwood, jasmine and orris root. And in the base there's oak moss, patchouli, cedar, musk and amber. Yes, 
Yes, yeah, so after various reformulations over the years, this now apparently smells absolutely nothing like how the uh, the extreme version of 1984 smelt. Uh, but unfortunately, I never owned the original because at that time when this was first launched, I was well into my uh, Polo Green and my Chanel Platinum Ego East phase, and nothing was really going to pull me away from those two bad boys. Uh, so all I can do really today is describe what I get from this right now without having my judgment clouded by uh, how it once was however what I can do is tell you how this one uh, compares or differs uh, from the other two uh, bottles that I own in this line so this one opens up with the uh, classic super bright lemony freshness that all the Eau Sauvage flankers hit you with uh, there's also the uh, signature prominent herbal accord, like what you get in uh, something like a cough sweet. It's quite medicinal and that sits on a base of oak, moss and vetiver. Uh, so you get this kind of dry grassy aroma from the base. The EDT and the Parfum versions retain the sparkling lemony freshness right into the uh, deep into the dry down, uh, but this one goes off in a different direction with the inclusion of lavender and haldehydes, which produce a, a, a lot more of a soapy accord in the heart of the fragrance, which smells more to me like fresh laundry. It's not as sharp and as zesty as the other two and everything seems to be more rounded uh, but you also get a bit more of like a, a synthetic smell that comes from it. You can really pick up on the aldehydes and to me it's like spraying the original EDT version but then layering it with, uh, with something like a, a neroli or white floral dominant fragrance up top. This one is an out and out summer freshie that you could wear dressed up or casually during the day or even in the evening. It's extremely versatile in the warmer months of the year and it'd be perfect uh, to complement a sharp tailored suit uh, but it'd also work equally well um, if you were just to, to wear it in a casual setting like if you were just wearing a t-shirt and going for a walk along the seafront or something like that. You could even wear this one as a clubbing scent. Even though this smells slightly more modern than the others in the line, I'd still say it still has like a, a mature scent DNA. So I'd say it's probably uh, still on the uh, old fashioned side for someone of maybe under the age of 30. And it definitely projects a, a really masculine aroma. I can't see many women wanting to wear uh, one, of, one from this line. This is just super clean and super refreshing. So it's pretty much ideal for any time that you want uh, just a little boost of freshness to wake you up and energize you and just give you a really nice little cheerful lift. The performance on this is pretty good and I'd say it sits really nicely uh, in the line in between the EDT and also the Parfum with a, a moderate projection and you'll get a good five hours of longevity which I'd say is acceptable for a, a super fresh summer fragrance of this type. People will definitely notice it on you as you're walking past and I wore it all day yesterday and I kept getting lovely little pleasing uh, wafts of it throughout the day uh, but I did reapply it after about the four hour mark because it had uh, by then become uh, a bit of a faint skin scent but yeah actually it's, uh, it, it is more powerful than the uh, the EDT uh, but maybe just doesn't perform as good as the, uh, the Parfum version. This flanker is a modern twist on a men's barbershop classic. It's kind of like taking a trip on the Orient Express and then finding out that it's now been fitted with 50 inch OLED TVs and Wi-Fi in each carriage. To some people that's, uh, that'd sound great but to others it'd be absolutely horrific. And this kind of sums up the, uh, the responses that this particular flanker gets in all the fragrance forums. The signature Eau Sauvage DNA is definitely present in this one uh, but it has been dragged uh, kicking and screaming into the 21st century uh, with this interpretation and I'd say it'd probably appeal more to younger guys that are just dipping their toes into the world of barbershop fragrances. In my opinion the Parfum uh, is probably the best smelling and the best performing one in the line and if you own this one then I'd say you've, you've probably got the best all rounder and I don't see really any need for any of the others unless you're kind of an ardent collector. This is still a mature and stylish James Bond kind of scent uh, but it's the Daniel Craig version rather than the Sean Connery one. 
I personally prefer the uh, the Parfum version. It smells better and it lasts longer. Uh, but even with all that said, I'd still give this one uh, a solid 8 out of 10. Yeah, so once again, that's about it for today's scent of the day. Uh, but don't forget, coming up tomorrow, uh, I'll be talking about another retro gentleman's classic. And then I've got uh, two cheapies that come highly recommended by one of the subscribers to the channel. So I look forward to trying these two out and letting you know how I get along with them. I'll also be uh, bringing you another perfume parlor haul, uh, which has got some really good ones in there this week in this week's episode. So plenty of good stuff to look forward to. And as always guys, if you have found this video useful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel. It's always uh, also great to hear all your thoughts, your opinions, your critiques and all other fragrance that feature throughout this 365 project. So keep your comments coming down in the comments section. So once again, thank you very much for tuning into this latest episode. Stay safe, keep smelling fresh and I'll see you very soon for another one. Bye bye for now.